Welcome to Math Rescue. Today we'll be discussing the hand method for evaluating trig functions at five base angles. Most trig students are expected to memorize the values of the trig functions evaluated at key base angles. The five base angles in degrees are 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. This amounts to memorizing at least 15 numbers. I've got good news. You don't need to memorize 15 numbers. In fact, you don't really have to memorize much at all if you use the hand method. Let me show you how this works. Hold your left hand in front of you, palm facing you with your thumb and your pinky pointing to the right. Visualize your hand as the first quadrant. Your pinky represents the positive x-axis and your thumb represents the positive y-axis. Your pinky then can be called 0 degrees and your thumb can be called 90. Within the first quadrant we also have 30 degrees, which is your ring finger, 45 degrees, which is your middle, and 60 degrees, which is your pointer. In the image you see, I give you the radian measures as well. You can save time if you know both for each finger, as you won't have to convert between degrees and radians. To evaluate the cosine or sine of an angle, keep your palm forward and lower the finger corresponding to the angle you need. To evaluate cosine, count the number of fingers still standing above the one you lowered, take the square root of that, and divide by 2. To evaluate sine, count the number of fingers still standing below the one you lowered, take the square root of that, and divide by 2. Let's practice by evaluating cosine and sine at 60 degrees. First, lower your pointer finger. The number of fingers above is just 1, your thumb. The square root of 1 is 1, and divide by 2 leaves you with 1 half as the cosine of 60 degrees. The number of fingers below is 3, Take the square root and divide by 2, and you have the square root of 3 over 2 as the sine of 60 degrees. You can check these on your calculator if you'd like. Evaluating the tangent of an angle requires an extra step. After lowering the necessary finger, flip your hand over so that your palm is facing away from you, your pinky is up, and your thumb is down. The fingers all still represent the same values, so make sure you lower your finger before you flip your hand over you don't want to get confused. Then simply take the square root of the number of fingers above divided by the square root of the number of fingers below. From our example of 60 degrees we can evaluate tangent. Lower your pointer finger, flip your hand over, and count how many are above. 3. The number below is just 1. So the tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over the square root of 1, which is simply the square root of 3. You can evaluate a trig function at any integer multiple of the five base angles by first finding the base angle that is coterminal to the desired angle, then using the hand method, and then determining the sine of the answer based on which quadrant the original angle is in. I wrote a blog post about finding coterminal angles that I will link here and in the box below. To determine the sine of your final answer, use the diagram on the screen. I like the phrase, all students take calculus. In the first quadrant, all of the trig functions are positive. In the second, only sine is positive. In the third, only tangent, and in the fourth, only cosine. Let's look at an example. To evaluate cosine at 5 pi over 6, we first determine the base angle that is coterminal to 5 pi over 6. Using the blog post I've linked, we find that pi over 6 is coterminal to 5 pi over 6. We can easily evaluate cosine at pi over 6 using the hand method, where we get the square root of 3 over 2. Since 5 pi over 6 is less than pi but greater than pi over 2, it is in the second quadrant. In this quadrant, only sine is positive. But since we're evaluating at cosine, our final answer is negative square root of 3 over 2. You can evaluate secant, cosecant, and cotangent by using the identities you see here. You will get better at using the hand method if you practice it. Try to use this method when working on your homework and you'll find that you can save time on your tests. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, click like below. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more helpful math problem solving videos.